All right, uh, we just completed the pre-flight, so now we're getting ready to start the engine. And you listen to this thing called ATIS, and what it is is it gives you uh, airport weather conditions, and it'll tell you what runway you're taking off, uh, what the wind direction is, what the altimeter setting is, etc. And this is information that they automate, and that's why it's called ATIS, Automated Terminal Information Service, just for the reason that uh, so they don't have to repeat themselves. Every time uh, an airplane calls up, they don't have to always tell them what runway they're using, what winds they're using, etc. It alleviates the controller from having to continuously give, it, give that information. And anyhow, let's listen to it, see what it says. 1, 2, Temperature 2, 2, 2 2.8, altimeter 2, 9, 8, 5. Visual approaching east, landing by runway 16 1, 6, right, 1, 6, left. Notice salmon runway 1, 6, right, 3, 4, left, shortened, south, 1,300 feet closed. Runway 1, 6, right, ILS, out of service. Taxi intersection Kilo 1 closed. Taxi intersection Alpha 2 closed aircraft over 10,000 pounds. Taxi away Golf 2 hold short position at runway 16 left, 34 right unmarked. Advise us to contact you of Information Hotel. Okay, it's Information Hotel, so we know that the, when we call up the ground controller before we taxi, we're going to tell this guy that we have hotel, and we'll get to that in a little bit once we start the engine. You get all, that, uh, get all the frequency information from a thing called a sectional. And you can find it right here on the Snohomish County Payne Field is where we're flying out of. And it shows down here the ATIS frequency of 128.65. And then it has the uh, 128 frequencies points. up here listed as well. It doesn't have ground frequencies listed on these charts. But uh, it's a, you'll start to well, you use these quite a bit when you're flying around, especially since you're uh, learning how to become a visual VFR pilot, standing for visual flight rules. Uh, you're going to have to refer to this chart. Of course, the advent of GPS helps substantially in terms of staying out of airspace and stuff like that. But uh, remember, when you have a private pilot's license, are you allowed to fly in a cloud? And the answer is no. I am not allowed to fly in a cloud. So you just remember that. Uh, there are cloud clearance requirements in certain types of airspace. You'll learn as you go along. But this being today's first lesson, I'm not really going to worry about that stuff. So anyhow, let's get this fired up. So we've already pre-flighted the airplane. Now we're inside the airplane. Everything's ready to go. We're going to go ahead and turn the beacon switch on. The master switch is already on. Turn that on. So again, you know, prior to starting the engine, you've already walked around. You made sure there's nobody out here, but make sure there's nobody behind you. So when the propeller does uh, start spinning, that you're not going to start blowing debris back into a hangar or open door or towards another airplane and damaging that. So as well, rocks can pick up and fling typically that way to the left. So anyhow, let's go ahead and start it. So what we do before we start, we've done all the pre-flight stuff, everything's set in here. We've done our cockpit, cockpit inspection. And so now what we do, and this is generic, uh, not towards any one specific airplane. So I'll be a little bit general when I'm talking about these airplanes and not getting into specifics for just this airplane because there's several different series of Cessna 172s that have enough differences in, in the uh, uh, fuel injection or carbureted that I don't want to really get you too wrapped up in that. So for now, it's just kind of a general thing. So let's go ahead and start that. To start this airplane, we put the mixture rich. This airplane has a fuel pump because it's fuel injected. So we turn the fuel pump on, look for a fuel flow. Fuel pump is off. The mixture is idle cutoff, which means pulled all the way out. That's that phrase, idle cutoff. The throttle is a quarter inch open. And then before we turn the key, we want to look both around both ways and then also yell the word clear. And why is that? It just means clear the propeller. We're ready to start. And again, you have your beacon switch on down here. If you don't have that on, that's the red flashing beacon on the tail. You want to make sure that's on because when people see and they're walking around airplanes, they see that beacon flashing. That means <coughs> that airplane has electrical power to it and could start at any time. So that's kind of how that, that whole thing works out. Okay, clear. And then give it a couple of seconds before you turn the propeller. You don't want to yell clear and start it right away because if somebody was down there, I don't know why they'd be down there. So anyhow, I yell clear. Now we're going to go ahead. We look around, don't see anybody, so we're going to go ahead and start the airplane. Okay, the first thing we want to look for is oil pressure. And uh, oil pressure should be coming up within 30 seconds on a uh, warm day or 60 seconds on a cold day. So if it's a cold day, it's going to take a little bit longer. Then I'll go ahead and turn the avionics master switch on. 
We'll just go ahead and listen to the ATIS again. Remember, automated terminal information service. Just to hear, just to make sure it didn't change. The advice you have, India. Okay, it's changed from hotel to information India, so we'll see what the difference is. Hang Airport Information India, 2353 Zulu. Wind 230 at 5, visibility 10, sky clear. Sensor 22, 2.9er. Altimeter 2983. Okay, and that's a big one right there. The altimeter setting 2983. There's a little Coleman's window in here, and it has 298, 299, 300. I'm going 29 decimal 8. Three. So they're using runways one six left and right. And remember the winds. The winds are two thirty. Uh, so uh, when you're talking about winds and runway headings, the wind is the direction from that it's coming from. So if they say the window wind is two seven zero, that would be the winds coming from the west. If the winds from one eight zero, that means it's from the south. Zero nine zero would be east, right? So uh, in this case, it's 2.30, so it's coming kind of from the uh, uh, southwest, and runway 16 is the runway that we'll be taking off on. I don't know if we're going to be using the right or, or the left runway. There's two parallel runways here at this airport. But that runway, the whole idea is that you want to take off into the wind uh, up to a 90-degree crosswind. If you have a 90-degree crosswind on a runway, they could go either way. But the whole idea is that you want to take off into the wind. So anyhow, let's give ground controller a call. And what we're going to tell him is who we are. And who we are is Cessna 9533 Delta. You notice in America there's an N before every number in on an airplane, November 9533 Delta. All the N stands for significance is that it's a U.S. registered airplane. So that's it. So anyhow, we are Cessna 9533 Delta. We're located on a thing called the Central Ramp. That's where we're parked, Central Ramp. And we are going to be westbound uh, with India because we're going to go to the west. Let's give them a call. And ping ground system 9533 Delta Central Parking, westbound with India. 33 Delta runway 16 right, Alpha 5 intersection. Tax to be a Delta, so Delta 1. Cross 1129er. Okay, 16 right uh, to Alpha 5 uh, via Delta, Delta 1 across runway 1133 Delta, thanks. Okay, so that sounded like secret code, didn't it? But uh, what it is is all these deltas and gulfs and all that sort of thing, they're just name, names of taxiways is all it is. So, so anyhow, before we start taxiing, we want to turn to the left, look to the right, make sure that we're clear, release the brake, and then immediately apply the brakes to make sure that the uh, brakes are working. And then to turn the airplane, Believe it or not, you don't steer it like a car with a left and right. There is no left and right here. Notice it doesn't do anything when we're going straight down the taxiway. You actually turn this thing with your feet. So no hands. I'm steering it with my feet. Pretty cool. Kind of like a sled. So how this thing steers, yeah, you can steer it with your feet. But if you just steer with the rudder pedal portion only, the bottoms of these, there's pedals on the floor, two of them. One's not a gas pedal, the other's not a brake. It's not the way it works in an airplane. They're both rudder pedals. The rudder pedals, the bottom portion of the pedal, works the rudder in the, on the tail of the airplane. And the top portion of those pedals actually are indeb in, independent brakes. Right top of the right pedal for the right brake, top of the left pedal for the left brake. Well, when you're on a long straight taxiway, you don't need to use any braking for turns. But when you're making very tight turns, sharp turns, you have to use brake. So if you're going to be making a sharp right turn, you're going to have to step all the way down on the rudder pedal, but then you're also going to have to s apply some brake. Well, if you do that without trying to add any power, you'll just stop. Again, as we're taxiing, you always want to stay on the yellow line. That's a biggie. And when you're coming up to any intersection, you want to look behind you and make sure that there's nobody else coming. And again, following the, the uh, taxiway here, staying on the yellow line. So now we're on Delta right now. So when we're taxiing, how fast do we taxi and how do we control the taxi speed? Well, if you have a bunch of power put in, meaning gas, it's kind of the equivalent of stepping on the gas pedal, and you had to step on the brake at the same time in a car, would you think that you're probably giving it too much gas? Yeah, you'd take your foot off the gas pedal and step on the brake, right? Same applies here. In this case, the gas pedal is in your right hand called the throttle and the brakes are on the two pedals on the floor. So anyhow, 
you just want to taxi as long as you're in control. That's the big thing. If you're having to apply brake when you're taxiing, you're taxiing too fast. And just reduce, just reduce power. So what I do is to control the airplane a little better as I pull back on the control wheel when I'm taxiing. That just helps raise the nose a little bit and it keeps the propeller clearance higher off the ground, which is good to keep it away from any rocks. And uh, that's primarily why I do it. But it also seems to give you a little bit be better control of the airplane when you're taxiing. So like they said, we could cross that runway 1-1, which we did, just did back there. And now we're pulling up to this uh, mysterious place called Alpha 5. And it sounds cryptic. And it sounds like you'd have to be a 32nd degree mason to know what that means. But all that really does mean is this whole taxiway down here is called Alpha. It starts at Alpha 1, and it works its way all, to al all the way to Alpha 10 or something like that at the other end. So in this case, we're halfway in the middle of the runway. You can see Alpha 5 on the, on the left in the black sign, and then you can see the runway 34 left and 16 right. Three, the runway 34 would be to the north. The runway 16 will be to the south, and that's the one that we're going to take off on today. So anyhow, okay, before we get going... We have to run the checklist to make sure that everything is checked before we take off. Anyhow, okay, before we get going, we have to run the checklist to make sure that everything is checked before we take off. When we were taxiing, I made sure that the turn coordinator was working down here. Now I'm taking a look at the heading indicator and setting that to the heading of 340, which matches our magnetic compass up here. And then I'll go ahead and put the heading bug. Not all airplanes have those, but there's a heading bug that I'm setting for that runway. So I know when I pull out, turn onto that runway, if that heading bug's not aligned with my current heading when I'm on the runway, then I know I'm probably on the wrong runway. So we've checked all the instruments. My airspeed is indicating zero. My attitude indicator is showing level, wings are level. My altimeter is good. My turn coordinator wings are level. My heading checks and my vertical speed indicator is zero. So these are things that you'll get used to. It, it's a, a lot to absorb initially, but eventually this just becomes a normal flow, just like anything in a car. So, okay, so before we take off, we have to run the engine up. And this particular plane will run up to 1800 RPM. And now we're checking the magnetos. It's one click to the left to check the left mag, then back to both, then two clicks to the right mag, and back to both. Then I'm looking over here at the vacuum. So why is that? I've checked the magnetos. Those are what provide the spark for the engine. There's two of them, two sets of them, and the vacuum drives a lot of these instruments. Now I want to go ahead and look at the ammeter. I can do that by lowering the flaps and raising them real quick, just down one notch and back up. And that shows me that the ammeter is working, taking a, taking a charge. I've checked the fuel. I've checked everything else down here. Fuel flows are good. Temperatures are good. And the oil pressure is good. So now at this point, we're ready to take off. But we still have to run a checklist, don't we? Because you can't just, it's not like a car where you start it and go. These things, you have to take your time and read the checklist. So this checklist, parking brake is set. Seat belts are on. Seat backs upright. Flight controls, I'm going to check those. I'm looking in the opposite direction. I'm turning to the left but looking to the right to see that it comes down. Pulling back to see that the elevator comes up. Turning to the right and then looking behind me to make sure that the rudders are in fact working by stepping on each individual pedal. Uh, the mixture is rich. That's the red knob down here. That controls fuel air mixture into the engine. Higher altitude you go, you don't want, there's not as much oxygen so you don't want to have as much fuel going in. So the mixture controls the mixture between the two. The elevator trim, which we talked about earlier, has been set for takeoff, and I set that on the pre-flight, remember? And it's, again, it's just rechecking everything that you do. And in my case, the, how I run a checklist, there's two ways you can run it. I suggest when you're brand new, do it item by item. It's just easier to do it that way. As you start flying more and more and more, you start getting used to the flow, go ahead and run your flow, and then just make, and then read the checklist to make sure you got the items. So, but initially, I highly recommend just going line by line. That's the best way to do it. So, okay, we did the throttle check, 1800 Army. We checked the magnetos. The enunciator panel we've checked. Not every airplane has that. This particular one does. It's a very nice airplane. Throttle's 1000 RPM or less. Okay, so we're sitting here. 
And I can see we have one guy right here, and we have a big jet on final for landing. So I'm going to call him up and tell him that we're ready for takeoff. But I know that there's maybe a couple guys in front of us, so I'm just going to, I'm not up at the hold line in the pole position. So I'm going to use this phraseology called ready in sequence. And we'll tell them what we're ready to do. Again, it's who we are, where we are. We're 9533 Delta. We're at Alpha 5, remember? And we're ready for takeoff westbound. So let me give them a call. And tower system 9533 Delta, Alpha 5, ready for takeoff westbound. 9533 Delta, main tower, roger, traffic landing. 33 Delta Road. So in this case, I saw that that guy's just sitting there. He's still running his engine up. I know this guy's landing right there. It's a big jet, and so I disregarded the se ready and sequence. If there's multiple airplanes down here, then you can use ready and sequence because it just tells them if you're ready to go and there's five other guys down here, they'll let you go before them because you told you that you are ready in sequence. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out here and taxi up because I don't see anybody else around here. And remember, everything that you do, make sure you look around before you make any move. Okay, clear for takeoff, uh, 16 right Alpha 5, 33 Delta. A lot, a lot happens on your first flight, doesn't it? That's just the way it works, you know, but it's fun stuff. There's so much information that comes to you when you're first learning to fly, it feels like your head's going to explode. But that's what the beauty of flying is, is every time you take a lesson, you learn something new and it starts to come together. And it's just a really good feeling. So you can go ahead and do what's called the uh, the death grip. Uh, just looking out for traffic as we're making this turn big thing. Always looking out for traffic. 99% of my scan is outside. So let's go ahead and continue around on that 360 degree turn and I'll show you what happens. We're in a turn right now, right? What do you think is going to happen if I let go of that control wheel? He's just going to roll over and uh, and that's the end of Captain Scott here? I don't know. Let's, let's see what happens. Okay, ready? Okay, I'm going to release the death grip. Got the death grip. Then I'm releasing the death grip. Thank you.